So today on Vulnerable, I have Stephen Anthony Lawrence. He is the actor who played Beans, but he also has an amazing journey in which he's played many, many characters and lived many lives. So we're gonna chat with him today on Vulnerable. I'm really excited to talk to you. Like, <laughs> I've, known, I've known you forever now, and I feel like we've been able to come back in each other's lives. Yeah. And that's that's really good. Like with, with even Stevens, it, it, I'll be real. It almost seems like a past life. You know how yeah, like, some people talk about like a past life? It almost seems like that for me. Like, yeah, it it's so starting to get stuff. to that place, doesn't it? Yeah, I feel like I'm starting to get older. And, you know, we just celebrated even Stevens' 22nd anniversary. And um, Disney hired me to do some weird TikTok. And I was like, okay, you know, whatever. I'll do it for them, whatever. And, um, and it was really, it was really kind of sobering because it was like, I'm really kind of sick of talking about this. Um, like I know, I know in my heart of heart, like there's no reason to do a reboot of even Stevens. Like there's just no reason. Yeah. Um, and that's okay. Do you know what I mean? Like, cause it served its purpose and it's so great that people still love it and cherish it. But like, ruined. Yeah, it's yeah. like, what's, what would be the point, you know? Um, and who knows 20 years from now, they'll like unearth, uh, you know, even Stevens was an IP from the early two thousands that like, they want to try to dust off and do it like exactly that way. And, um, who the fuck knows what, what, what they I don't would think do. you could, I don't think you could do it. You, you know, a lot of the stuff, it's just, I don't, I don't think it would work today. Yeah. You know, I'm, I I know. I mean, I feel like it could work in so far that like you have a kid who loves comedy and like his approach to whatever comedy is at that time, they decide to do it could be interesting. But again, comedy has changed so much since then, too. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No, <laughs> totally. totally. I mean, oh. Dude, some of the jokes that you were saying around set at the age that you were at, it was like I was like, this little boy is running around <laughs> saying all crazy stuff. Yeah, like even even some of the stuff that it, it didn't even make the final cut. Like, like remember the one of the writers wrote like ch the, the Chives episode of Stephen Manor. It was the, my, the original line was like Chives do this, Chives do that, Chives polish my knob. You know, <laughs> like as, as in like you know you, you know literally meant doorknob, but that's not what the writers were talking Dude, about. Dude, they they got away <laughs> with you saying the craziest stuff. Um, and you had this cute little face that you could get, you could literally not like get into trouble. Like I have a little daughter and she, she has the same thing where it's like, she's so adorable that like, she just can't, <laughs> I can't stay mad at her. And I think yeah. that's, I honestly do feel like, and I mean, and let's be honest, we had you, we had you on the show because our ratings were low. Um, we, we were, did you know that? No, I didn't. I didn't uh, honestly. Oh, here's a little feather in your cap uh, for the past life, of course, is that Beans, you know, our ratings were a lot lower than Lizzie McGuire and um, they were really competitive at the time. So they wrote in you because your character was younger and um, they wanted to keep the demo of the youth base, which I guess we were aging out of. I, it was definitely in high school at the time. And I think that, you know, Shia hit a growth spurt. So he was getting taller and taller and taller. And I think that the writers themselves came from the whole like full house concept of like, oh, we'll write a new character in to like save the day kind of thing. Um, and I think that was you, like you were the nosy neighbor archetype that was like brought to an absurd level. You See, know, I, you know, all I know is, you know, what I experienced on the show. I mean, my first episode on there was Secret World of Girls, you know, and I, I, I it was a dream come true, obviously, working with Fred, you know, you know, because he he came from the world of being a child actor himself. Yeah, he did. He did. And you know? um, and it, he was really he was really like wet behind the ears, but he was really enthusiastic to become a director. It was his first job. It was his yeah. first job, too. But that hadn't been your first job. Right. So, no, I, I, I you know, I it, it's one of those sayings, Christy. It's just like, you know, I'm sure even Stevens wasn't your job, your first job. You know, I'm sure you were in. You know, no, 20, no. Di 20 different co-stars and 10 different guest stars and 30 different commercials until you finally got your big break. You know, I mean, I don't know if I had that kind of track record. Maybe you did. But I was like I was it was my big break in so far that I was stuck in New York City 
and doing like art house movies. And like, I was going to do a very different, I would have had a very different career if I would have stayed uh, in New York, but I, ch- I only went to California because it was pilot season and my, my musical shut down. So they gave us like two weeks worth of pay and mm. our agent, our agent said, come and do some pilot season. And so actually I think we were there for about a month and it was when pilot season was still like a, like a certain set time. Yeah. So, so I went and even Stevens was one of those auditions. So it was really just a fluke for me. And so in a way it was a big break, but yes, like I had been working since I was like, you know, I was trying to work, but mostly in theater. But with you, how did it start with you? Oh, I started doing baby modeling when I was, or my my parents got me into baby modeling when I was baby why four, four wow. or five. I I don't know. I was I was a cute kid. You you, you were right there. I was I was kind of cute. I'll take I'll take the blame for that. <laughs> um, and it was actually Ashley Kissons. Parents, she was on, she was a little uh, curly headed girl on Growing Pains. And uh-huh. her mom was one of the judges on the show. And her mom told my parents to get me into it. And they did. And it's just, you know, you just grow, when, when you grow up into it, it's all you know. Right. You know? Yeah. You, you don't know how to do anything else. This is just <laughs> all, this is just all I know. <laughs> That's fucking helpful. Um, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny i actually have graduated to being able to like swear on podcasts now and um i i have this other podcast that's mostly animation focused and it's more family friendly of course but with vulnerable it's really important to like have those uh, like real conversations about like what it was like you know to have those trials and tribulations and like you and i have always kind of talked about it in like a like an sort of quiet understanding of one another, but like, I do have questions and you are, I feel very close to me, whether I see you a lot or not. I always call, you always pick up. I'm always there for you if you need something too. But it's one of those things where there's a lot of questions that I would want to ask you, but also wouldn't want to like, like, like overstep you know, and yeah. it's what's what what I found really liberating too about talking about like some of my struggles and some of the shit I actually was going through is that people really do care. And, you know, people are stuck on this version of us, like, and I know you would know that. <laughs> and it's good and it's healthy to have that distance though from from you being beans. Like that's not like you, that's not where you end and that's not where you begin. And it's like actually nothing to do with you. You've got a mm. full ass beard and you're a political like person now and <laughs> totally different yeah. time in your even life. Even though, life. even though it was such a big part of my life. I know? know, I know, it, man. It, it, it sounds so weird. It, it, it is a past life, but it was so much a part of my life. You know, people coming up to me saying that, Hey, you know, I watched whatever episode and I was going through this at the time and it really made me laugh and just forget about my problems for for 30 minutes or yeah. you know, 20 yeah. minutes plus, plus 10 minutes of commercials. Wow. That's really that's really cool. That's really cool. Um, mm. Would you say, though, that like I know I know you love your dad so much and, and he may oh. he rest in peace. And my dad is also passed on. But what was it like in terms of like were you going to acting classes? Were you at a young age as you were getting older and starting to walk? Um, were you like, what was that like? Were, was your mom sort of like a stage mom? Like, what was that like? Yeah, mom was mom was definitely the stage mother. Definitely lived vicariously through me. Uh, she always kind of, you know, wanted she always wanted to be an actor with no talent. And, and dad always had a ton of talent and should have gotten into stand up, but just had a family and had to put bread on the table right you know, it, was, it was kind of the other way around in my household right uh, you know yeah there was times where you know i'll be real yeah i i don't know if i i really wanted to do it but then the next day i i would and i'm it, in some ways i i am glad and, and i i wouldn't take anything back in the world even even now but, you know, yeah, there's there's definitely, you know, days I wonder what life would have been like had I had a quote unquote normal upbringing. Sure. Yeah. Curi- curiosity kind of 
killed the cat, killed the killed the bean, I guess you might say. <laughs> okay, so what was your first film that you had done? Oh, first film. Was it Jay and Silent Bob? Uh, really? or no, no, no. It, it was actually it was actually 13 Moons. 13 Moons. It was this movie with Steve Buscemi mm-hmm. and and Peter Dinklage. Mm-hmm. And it, it was about um oh uh, Krusty the Clown. The, okay. It was like kind of it's kind of like a mockumentary of Krusty the Clown, and Steve Buscemi plays um well, the you know the the real life guy that played Krusty the or Bozo, not Bo Krusty Bozo. Oh, Bozo I know the what clown, you're talking. Okay, right? yeah, Bozo the Clown, right? And <laughs> and what really happened in Bozo the Clown? They you know he used to always get up in these kids' faces and you know go. <laughs> Yeah. Until one day, you know, and keep in mind, this was back in the day. They did all this live, live on the air, children's TV. So until one day, one kid didn't really like it and literally goes, fuck off, clowny <laughs> 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 on live TV. And it's oh kind God. of like about, you know, Bobo's descent into madness. Oh, wow. So that was your first film that you yeah, that was as my, a kid? That was my first movie telling, you know, Bozo the clown to go fuck himself. Yeah. Wow. Welcome to Hollywood. I was going to say that seems sort of fitting in a weird way. Um, And like, and so your parents were like, cool, like you can swear. Like they had a good, like sort of in your dad, you said had sort of like a comedic background. Oh yeah. See, it was, it was weird as hell because my dad was super cool with, with all that stuff, you know, understood. Hey, you know, to teach me, Hey, this is, this is a film. You know, you're you're playing make believe and you're going to drop this shit at the end of this, which a lot yeah. of our actors today still don't understand versus my mother, who was like kind of extremely religious, but uh-huh. hypocritical, re- hypocritical religious where she was she was the type of mom which would get on you about watching Harry Potter and then she'd sit and go watch Bewitched. Mm, yeah. In the next room. Yeah. But, yeah, but I you're, think what you're, yeah. your was your mom what they call a boomer because she was a little bit older from what I remember. Oh uh, yeah, she was she was tail end of the boomers, tail end okay. of boomers, a little bit younger than dad. Yeah, what's your? By the way, I, you know we don't have to talk about her, but I I know your I kind of remember your dad and he was so sweet. But what was your mom's like life like? What was she? What was her backstory? Uh, abused by her dad. Uh, grew up in some. Grew up pretty much a desert rat in okay. Ridgecrest, Ridgecrest, California. Uh, never really had, you know, much of a job. She was, she was CNA for a little while, mm-hmm. you know, lifeguard for a little while, waitress for a little while. And that's how dad and mom met. Dad was managing a restaurant. Mom was a waitress. You okay. know, being, okay. being in one of your employees always ends up great. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that's how mom and that's how, listen, son, that's how dad met mom. Yeah, I guess oh, so. God, yeah. <laughs> but I never knew that. That's really interesting to me because I remember I remember your family and when you popped up onto set and like, you know, like you had mentioned so sweetly in the past, like you always kind of felt like I was a big sister type on set. Yeah. And I had the misconception of thinking that people started to hate me. Um, and I think that's just an insecure teenage girl thing. Um, but I definitely don't think it was helped by Shia's dad. Like, and this isn't like to, to shit on anyone really. It really isn't. But I do just remember around the time that you kind of came onto set was like one of our last few seasons. And the, the mood was more tense after you came, but it wasn't because of you. I think it was more or less the constant frustration of how do we compete, you know, with the other show and how do we like, you know, uh, mm-hmm. I don't you you probably didn't even realize this was happening because you were so young. And then no. for me, I was kind of already getting older by that point where I was starting to really focus on college and my next steps. And I was very stressed out and very tired. But you were this vibrant, sweet, zany, funny, like you were everything that you were on that show off off like too. Yeah. but you were also very professional. Like if anyone was like, hey, you know, and a lot of times people would call you beans. Do you remember that? 
Yeah. Yeah. No, I still get it to this day. Um, oh, you know, yeah. But like I, on set, though, as a kid, like they wouldn't even call you by your they Would they call you Steven? I just remember people calling you beans all the time. Yeah. People just called me beans. Yeah. No, I don't think anyone ever really called me Steven. It was that's really fucked up, though. When you think about it, it's thing. like. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't method acting. Never, never asked anybody to call me beans. I'm not a method actor. No, I turn that off when I leave set. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay, okay. So then this is where it gets interesting for me. So you were an actor before that in your own right. You had like your skill set. You were funny. You knew you were cute. You came in. You like, you know, I remember you talking about the audition process and whatnot for that. Um, mm -hmm. Right. It was very, mem was it memorable for you to like audition I and Yes, it, it was mem memorable because they wrote my joke in before booking me. And I was I was all worried that they were going to use my joke without booking me first. I was like, oh, that sucks. How am I going to prove this? My joke. This was way before, you know, intellectual property was, you know, like a thing even. So I was free, you know, good man. Obviously, like I, I think I think you and our brains kind of work the same because my mind always jumps to the worst possible conclusion. <laughs> Obviously, they're going to use that joke without booking me. But that's so interesting that you were eight years old, right? Yeah. Yeah. And, I know you were, and you were already thinking defensively like that or had to think defensively like that, which kind of sucks when we think about the way that child actors have to sort of program their minds to be. I don't know. Bit, I don't know if that's even, a, you know, a, uh, because of child acting. I think that's just society nowadays. Sadly. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, now more than ever with the kids, I feel like they're being exposed to kind of what we've all gone through with this kind of transactional thinking where it's like, mm -hmm. OK, so if I show up, if I do this, like, what do I get from that? And, you know, for me, I think that's been really hard in terms of like, you know, and social anxieties over time, um, how to make new friends, um, sort of have self-worth and all that stuff sort of, I mean, there's a lot to unpack. Like we could be here all day and I would love to talk to you about it too sometime when we actually get to be in person. But, yeah. you know, I, it's a really big passion of mine. And, you know, I had done a documentary and you and I sat next to each other. And I don't know if you even remember that. Do you? When you I came? Do. Yeah, oh, okay. That was, yeah. that was, that was a big deal. And like, it meant a lot to me that you showed up and I hadn't seen you in, oh my God, so many years. I don't even know how I tracked you down. How did I track you down? I don't know. I, I camped through my old manager, Kathy, I believe. Oh, okay. So I, I went, okay. So I went through your manager. Okay, cool. Cause I was doing a documentary about child actors and I did it with the union that Fred Savage had been a part of. Now he's not. And it's called mm. the looking ahead program. And I talk about it mm. a lot because it's the, really the only way to start changing um, policy and like things that we see like child actors go through and it's like people want to like shit on millie bobby brown from like stranger things right now like why why why, why? she's because a what? dude she just turned 18 and she's even been vocal about it some people talk about her being groomed by drake and like some other people because okay. she, I, I there's so much um fan fiction but when there's a there's a really weird divide between your character yeah. and like who you are so I've always found it interesting that like people just assumed that you were beans. Like people assumed that you were this little person. Did you like playing beans? That's what I got to ask. I don't think anyone's ever asked you. Honestly, yes, I did. You know, like I, the good outweighed the bad. You know, the good outweighed the bad. Okay. You know, I, I'd have people coming up and saying, hey, you know, all different kinds of reactions, you know. You'd, you'd get the people saying, oh, God, you know, I went through this and, you know, you made me. God, I like, used to love watching you on your show. You brought our family together. I literally yeah. just did a cameo today with somebody saying that I brought their family together who had been fighting for years. And like, wow. that was the thing that they could bond over was our show. It's kind yeah, of and see, that's what makes it feel like another life because you have now lived your life in so many different directions. Um, yeah. And then when people start to talk about that and you look around and the people that are coming up to you, you know, they are older too. And I, I can't really put my finger on it, but there's been enough time that's gone by now where it, I, you've really nailed it. It has really does feel like it's, it's in the past. And um, there's only so many times you even want to talk about it. And like, you've been such a good sport for so long. Have you ever just gotten fucking mad and not wanted to be like the beans like person or like, I gotta ask that. <laughs> Um, 
No, never wanted, never wanted to not be beans. No, I, 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 I definitely maybe, maybe questioned, questioned even the role of beans because I'm sure, you know, our world is getting a lot crazier lately, you know? Mm -hmm. You know, did I did I make the right decision by taking the character? Because it definitely offended a lot of people that think pork is a sin, you know? OK, <laughs> so I, I have gotten a lot of hate mail, even from people that I think eating pork is a sin. You know, and are you're you gonna serious? Be out. Yeah. Oh my so God. It, it doesn't matter what you do in this world. You're going to piss somebody off, you know? Hold and on a second. Of, was this like <laughs> when you were a kid or was this yeah. like? Yeah, no, I did you know that I got I got I got this this letter from, uh, uh, you know, yeah, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. Fun, from a fundamentalist group, we'll say, you know, uh, about what? eating bacon. Yeah. About how I'm yeah, how, how I'm, you know, going to send people to hell for oh, all my wow. bacon. Yeah. You know, um, so, yeah, you know, you, you, you wonder that. And then, you know, it's like. I, I definitely, and also, you know, like the, the episode, the spot on Raven I did too, you know, yeah. uh, I, I, I got, I got, um, this girl that was saying that she had some pretty bad stuff happen to her. And the guy that did it to her said that he based it off of my character in Raven because he, you know, my character in Raven, uh, uh, um, hypnotizes Raven into giving her a kiss. Right. Well, I guess I guess that happened to her in real life, but a a, a lot different, a lot more brutal, we'll say. Um, so, All right. Yeah. So, you, so you have this like guilt for the, these these child these childhood characters that you've played in a way. Place. Yeah, because I believe, hmm. sure, you know, in this new day and age, we got to be culturally you know, not creatively responsible with our art. But but you are proud, though, of bringing people together. I feel, I've, I've, I feel, yeah, I feel you can, you know, take anything and make it ugly or you can make anything and make it beautiful. You know, it's in the eye of the beholder. I know. I, I know. I know what you mean. Like when people try to talk about our shows and, you know, they, they, they ask, well, why do you think they're still so impactful to people? Um, and it's, I just, I think it's because of the, the quality of the, the story. And um, like, I just think those kind of, stand the test of time personally yeah. right like even stevens yeah. was like a really well done kid show and so when people think about it it's not just because it's got a cult classic following but it's because it had really good elements to it that that stand the test of time that being said like you said it's a very different world and we would have i'm sure that we never meant to offend anybody because we were trying to be funny when it was acceptable to do that like we literally had to i don't know if you remember this we had to reshoot something do you remember all the standards and practices stuff that would go down? Like, were you privy to some of that stuff? Like, did they ever make you reshoot something? Because, like, oh, um, no, 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 I never Shia, had to reshoot anything. No, Shia had to reshoot a scene where he didn't have a bicycle helmet on. And, and, and it, because it was like the helmet was on, but it wasn't clipped. And oh, so they had yeah. to clip it and go and reshoot it on location and everything. It was like a whole thing. Oh, I think I remember that uh, yeah. because of the, uh, the that was a Close Encounters episode, wasn't it? Oh, yeah. Damn. You got a better memory than me. I. It's funny how and then there's another thing, too. Do you feel like a lot of your childhood memories are kind of like blacked out? Yeah. Yeah, I do. What totally. do you make of what do you make of that? Because I do. I have that, too. Um, <sighs> old age. <laughs> I, I don't know. It's been people, that way people, for a while. Yeah. Uh, no, I think it's I, I think it was just almost too much to take in at once. Maybe mm -hmm. it was like an endorphin, just, you know, too much endorphins it eventually just shuts off. And then, yeah, like you, you, you're at your limit on, on how much it's like being on Disney Channel in a way is like almost being on a casino floor. There's just so many flashing lights and so much going on. It's easy to miss something out of the corner of your eye. Yeah. And it's very similar to what the kids are going through with social media today. It's like flashing lights and overstimulation and like there's 24 um, seven, you know, judgment yet also adulation. And then you can also get sponsored content, even to somebody that's in the middle of Ohio or something like you can become a star. Like the fact that anyone can be famous now is so probably stress inducing for the Gen Z. And, um, you know, I obviously have moved to 
like a lot of that. So I, I, I see it. And then we're keeping our kids away from it as much as possible. Um, I mean, I'm not saying they don't watch like TV and iPads, but social media is a very different, very different thing. Did you ever, so, so moving forward from even Steven's days, which I did want to ask you about your relationship with Shia. Cause I, I feel as though he was a, like one of your first mentors. Yeah. I, I just, I remember the way that you followed him around on set and he would be so sweet to you, even though, you know, he was going through his own bag of shit. And yeah. it just seems like, like, what was, what, honestly, I'm just curious, what was your relationship? What's your takeaway from that? Yeah, I love Cheyenne. I've got nothing but good words to, to say about him, you know? Yeah. He was like a big, like, big brother to you. Yeah. Yeah. At least yeah. when we were filming, yeah. I felt like he was like always making you laugh and like doing funny things. Yeah. I love the guy. I love everybody on that show. You know, I, I, I've, I've grew to, I've grew to hate the phrase. We're like family Mm -hmm. because it, because it always sounds like such bullshit, but you know, God, it it seems like we really were in in a way, we obviously Mm -hmm. extremely dysfunctional, but you know, I could always come up to you and ask you, you know, if I was dealing with something, whether it be industry related or, you know, growing up as a kid or whatever, I, you know, I felt like, I I I mean, Half of the grips too. I mean, I was. Oh I was, yeah. Oh yeah. You know, I'm sure. You know, there was a lot of dirty grip humor that you know. <laughs> you know, no, I probably no. you know overheard and you know. Oh my god! I remember being like, by. I remember you trying to say some sassy thing about my butt or something, and I was like, "Stop it!" And I was like, oh, you "Stop god. it! You don't talk like that." I remember that. I was like, totally. Like I always wanted to be a babysitter because I've also had fantasies of the of of not you know, having that life at that time, I actually really was craving normalcy and Mm. like structure, which is like what I just try so hard to have with my kids. Now it's, it's, it's an overcorrection, but, um, you know, I, I wanted to be a babysitter. Like I, I, I never really had a little brother like Shia. I was the youngest of four. And then like Shia was considered my younger brother, but Mm -hmm. when you came in, it, it was, it felt like, you were just so young. It was so sweet. Yeah. Really no, and I wasn't, I was an only child too. So I feel like I kind of almost kind of was gravitating to that too. You know, mm, I see. Okay. So that's good to know that people understand that our set really was a warm and loving environment for the most part. I'd say it was 90% that. And then yeah, it was definitely dysfunctional. Like all families are, ours yeah. was no, but yeah, we, yeah. we all really had each other's backs. I feel. Well, and people want to pretend like, Oh, Disney is like, this like evil, evil industry. And it's like, Disney wasn't even on set. Like they had nothing to do with it. They hired a production company and those producers were the ones that had to take care of us. And they just signed the checks and then they would give notes. And that was it. Like people really go in hard when I talk about stuff and they're like, Oh, you know, Disney does this crazy stuff and Nickelodeon does this crazy stuff. And I mean, I don't know though. Like I do kind of feel like some of that Nickelodeon stuff might be real. Like the Dan Schneider stuff. Like, I don't really know. Wait a minute. You didn't you didn't have to lick his feet. You're telling me <laughs> you didn't have to lick his feet. Really? <gasps> Holy shit. Oh, my God. Uh Oh, <laughs> I, I did. I, I like the toe and everything. Do you, actu- do you actually you dirty bird? Do you actually have any kind of Dan Schneider? And did you ever meet him? Yeah. No, I was I was a, I was a series. I was a, a reoccurring on, on the Amanda show. So oh, that's yeah, right. I, I met him. I met him twice or at least twice because I was on the show twice. Got it. And you I don't remember him. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. I, I don't. Yeah. I think he's yeah. in the more little yeah. girls anyway than little boys is what I heard. God, that's horrible. So I awful. Yeah. I mean, I Amanda, Amanda, I mean, how was she to work with? I mean, did you feel like at that point she was just a kid like working? Yeah, to- she's just a normal kid. Her dad seemed a little overprotective as, as he should be in this yeah. crazy ass yeah. industry. Yeah. 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 She okay. always seemed really kind of, that's really kind great. of quiet. Kind of quiet. You know, we didn't, you know, I was only on two episodes, so I, you know, we weren't really, you know, I was definitely the odd man out there, but yeah, yeah. no, Drake, Drake was really nice to me when I met him. So was Josh Peck. Yeah. Amanda was great, you know? Yeah. I, I like, I, again, though, you're kind of hard not to like, right? Like back then. Um, yeah. No. <laughs> oh, I pretty much just, you know, you do your three hours of school, you learn your lines, you you know, you, it's like the, you don't the English, like piss anyone off. Yeah. Yeah. You, you know, you, you hit, it's like the English say, you know, you hit your mark and try not to bump into the furniture. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. So 
were you, so did even Stevens kind of set you up to then like book all this other stuff? Like you basically, what people don't realize is they're like, oh yeah, that's Beans. But like Beans, the actor who played Beans, Stephen and Anthony Lawrence has done like a million things after. Um, so I just like, I'm curious, like of all those, of all the things that you did after even Stevens. Yeah, it, it, it just, it kind of snowballs. You know, one thing becomes another, becomes another, becomes another, becomes another. You How know? old were you? Like 10 at that point? Yeah, no, I, but I, I finished, I wrapped the movie, even Stevens, when I was 13. What? Uh, yeah. You were yeah, 13? I was 13, yeah. But you were eight when we started? What the heck? No. Yeah, I was like nine, nine or eight when, I, when we started because of all the, all the hiatuses and stuff. Because I remember <gasps> it was my 13th birthday. You're right. Okay, on, but on the oh, movie. wow. I remember it was my 13th birthday on the on because I had it on the set. And I remember the cake y'all got me because okay. I was I was so stoked that y'all y'all got me this cake. And it Aww. was like a big thing because, you know, it's I had such a small family. Like it was just mm -hmm. dad, mom, mom and I. Right. So for, for the, this whole, you know, couple hundred person crew to surround me and sing happy birthday with my a cake with my face on it. It, it really meant a lot. So it was mm. just I don't know. I just remember that. I definitely yeah. Was, no. And it was in Hawaii when we were filming. No, that was we. It, that was I remember the day. Like I was like literally at, the, the original Xbox had just come out. You know, it's so, it's so weird because you know I, I can't tell you what I had for breakfast yesterday, but I can tell you what I was doing on this one day twenty five years ago. Yeah, you know? but it was your birthday, so I get that. I do get that. That's awesome. So did you get an Xbox? Yeah, Shia got it for me. You know, I yeah. remember that. Oh, I remember yeah. that scene. I think Shot. we were. Yeah, it was wild. Yeah. He cared about you quite a lot. And it surprises me that you guys aren't in touch. Are you, you're not really in touch, right? Yeah, no, 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 we're not really in touch. now. Yeah, that really sucks because I just felt like I saw a side of him when we were when we were all that age that was very human and kind. But um, this this industry will will kind of mess with you over time. Um, so basically what I'm also curious about is, so you were on a roll, right? With booking Raven mm -hmm. and then booking Amanda show. And then I saw you in kicking and screaming. And then I saw like, you were popping up in all of these things. Were you in cheaper by the dozen? Yeah. Yeah. It was yeah like, like yeah. nonstop booking. Like what was your life? Like you were in, you were technically in high school or were you just homeschooling or what? No, I was, I was still in private, like a private school in, in Fresno at the time. I didn't move out to LA till I was 17. So I was still in Fresno. Whenever I wasn't working, I was still in Fresno at, at school. And then oh, when okay. I was when I was working, I would be in a hotel room in LA, you know. Uh, ah, interesting. Whatever. Yeah, they didn't have like they didn't have like Airbnbs, but like Disney set you up, they would put you in a hotel. No. <laughs> Heck no. Heck no, Disney didn't put me. That's so bad. That's so yeah. bad. They should have put you in a hotel. That's no, ridiculous. I was in this I was in this little little rinky dink uh Stearns Motel. It was Stearns. it was like, it was like right on Washington and Sentinella. Like it was pretty I bet you I bet you want that to burn the F down. <laughs> yeah, they changed your name. There's something new now. Yeah. Um, I but, get that. Yeah. There's some places in LA that I drive by and I'm just like, I want to flip off because it's just oh like, God. Oh, the Oakwood. I still, whenever I oh. drive by the Oakwoods, I always flip them off. <laughs> <You. laughs> oh God. That place. Oh. oh my God. Oh my God. Oakwoods. Okay. So, um, did you know when you were like booking that you were like the shit at the time? Like, were you like, you, were you starting to get cocky at all or like I was a you, chubby little chubby little insecure kid you know that's just it you know I, I feel like all the all the cocky guys that's why they're cocky they cover up their insecurities with this sense of false false bravado you know yeah yeah well did you do that is what you're saying yeah of course i feel like a lot of guys do most guys do that's a lot why a lot of you know cocky guys are like that they're secretly yeah. really here you know oh 100 percent, of course and then <laughs> Would you say that like when you went back to Fresno were people, was it hard being a fish out of water when you would go back? Yeah, it was, I don't know, you know, yes and no. So, so about half the people accepted me and then half of the people were mad that you, you made it. It's kind mm -hmm. of the, it's kind of how, you know, some people are mad you get out of the hood or something like that. Mm -hmm. Maybe like some, some sort of a jealousy. Mm -hmm. 
Because I don't know, because that's just it. That's Hollywood. You know, I'm definitely not, not, not any more talented, you know, than anybody else out here, I would say. You know, everybody's mm-hmm. so talented in Los Angeles. You go to any, any restaurant, your waiter could, you know, could, yeah. could easily be, could make it, you know? Yeah, that's true. That's true. But you had a very unique look. And so, which, by the way, you look nothing like that person anymore either. Like your whole look is completely different. I think like the way you've aged, you've aged so well, you look just like your dad, but like younger svelter, you know, you, he did have a bald head though, which you kind of now have, but, Thanks, but, dad. It, but you have a beautiful head shape and then like your beard and everything, like you are a grown ass man. And so to me, like, it's very obvious why you're probably so much more confident now because it's like, you've made this journey. You have this like life that you've lived. And like, it's really important to know that like, yes, you did the things that meant a lot to people, but you also created value in yourself. And it's a struggle, man, but like, you're doing it. You're living the life. Like you're every day, probably greeting whatever of those. I mean, I saw your post recently on Facebook about something and I was like, man, like, (laughs) Come, somebody gives Steven a break. He's like, doesn't deserve to be like bitched out by someone. And you are taking everything in stride. And like, I think I've always really respected that about you because like, I, if it were me and people were going to always be like, Hey, um, you're only Ren. No, no. Like my name is Christy. And people still do like, they'll come up to me and be like, Oh, it's Kim possible. And it's, Oh, it's Ren Stevens. And like, the I'd say 99% of my fans are frigging amazing. But, you know, randomly, there'll be 1% of people, and I'm talking about people who comment too. There'll be the 1% people who are like, the, the you know, just basically calling me by my name. And so for a while, it's like, as a kid, you it does affect you. And you're just like, but where's my worth? Who am I? Which is like normal yeah. for everybody to go through that. So you're on a high, you're super confident. And then eventually it stops. So, like, what happens? Yeah, well, yeah, I definitely took some time off. You know, dad got dad got sick, so I took some time off to. So that's why you, you know, stopped. You stopped working like consciously, or you just didn't. You weren't booking anymore because you got older. Well, you no, know, I was still doing some work, you know. And then I, you know, you get when you have a parent that's dying of cancer, you know, you got to be there, especially or, when or, they're your like love of yeah, your life. Bro- or hire, yeah, either that or hire somebody to be there full time. And, uh, you know, my dad and I were too close and I'm not going to trust him with some, you know, with someone I don't know. Like, that. so yeah. I, you know, I was lucky enough, you know, I was, I had just done a really great commercial and I made a, a good amount of money on that, on a stupid commercial, man. And I lucked out, it came in right at the right time. I was able to take some time off to be with him and, yeah, you know, and then just dealing with it, dealing yeah. with losing a losing somebody. Man, that's hard and suck. My dad passed away from cancer too, and I and I was in hospice with him, and I just had to kind of sit and watch him deteriorate. But like, I had already had a baby, so like, how how old were you? Twenty one. Oh, I see. Okay, so you were so you were working pretty steadily, and until you took the time off, like around like nineteen twenty or something, and you had lived in L.A. Yeah, because I. Yeah, because I just did, well, you know, nothing. I hadn't had a series regular lately, but I, you know, I just did that guest star on Weeds. I was just on Eagle Heart. It was a Cartoon Network show uh, with, um, oh, um, Chris Elliott. Um, it was called Eagle Heart. Um, so, yeah, you know, I've been doing some stuff. You know? Yeah. And then, and then you, but, and then you left LA to go back and be with your dad in Fresno? Uh, no, we were living in L.A. at the time. Okay, Santa so, Carina, you, technically. so at 17, yeah. your family moved yeah, with but, you to L.A.? Yeah. Okay, did you buy a house? Yeah, Dad, or? And I, Dad moved with me to... No, no, we were just rent, renting, too. I got it. Okay, renting got too. it. Do you ever wish you would have, like... Is there ever, like, a time where you wish you would have invested your money differently? Oh, God, every day of my life. God. Me, every too. Day. <laughs> me yeah. too. Me too. But at the end of the day, you know... It, it made me who I am today. And, you know, now I can, now I get to tell the next generation of child actors, you know, don't be a dipshit, you little shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I get that. No, I get that. And I, and you know, it's funny, like the way that you put that 
it's filled with love. And, and I think that there's certain kids in our business that do need to be talked to like that. And Mm -hmm. you may have been one of them or, you know, cause like, I think your family dynamic was a little bit like that. I know your mom was, I know. Oh my God. I remember your mom like on set and she'd be like, come here, you little son of a bitch. (laughs) You're sick of literally. Oh God. Yeah. 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 Oh God. Do you remember Uh, that? She would call you a little son of a bitch. (laughs) She'd walk around and she'd be like, and she had this like gruff voice. I was like, I was like, oh "Oh, yes. Oh, oh, yeah. You're like, yeah, four packs of cigarettes a day. Like, she, oh, sounded, she would my smoke mom, with <laughs> dude. She sounded like you remember fucking Roz from Monsters, Inc. Hello. Hello, Scully. Like oh, the, for, the people, for the people listening at home, that's what my mom sounded. Like. She sounded exactly like that. And she would smoke cigarettes, I think, with Shia's dad, like out by his yeah. motorcycle, like right when you would walk out of the warehouse. <laughs> oh, my God. Anyway, she is. She also passed, right? Yeah, I believe so. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. Okay, I don't know. Got it. I don't you know, I don't talk to certain people in my family, too. I think it's completely valid to be like, this wasn't the easiest time for me. And like, I have grown past all of that. But if you didn't want to kind of talk about it in that way, that's fine, too. So like, for me personally, though, like, I actually really had a hard time dealing with my mom, like she, she was definitely deep into her alcoholism when we were doing even Stevens. And so a lot of people didn't really like, like know that. And so I, I kind of, I think she was very like isolated and what people don't realize too, about these stage parents is that yes, part of them is living through you. And so that means like, what do you do when a dream is deferred? And it's like, you know, that like poem Mm -hmm. where it's like a dream deferred. It's like, does it fizzle out? Does it, you know, Does it combust like what happens to it? And it just festers for some of these people. And it brings out a very ugly side of them. Send me that poem. I've never read that. Send me, yeah, text me. Send me when you get a chance. I I would love to. That's what I love about art though. You know, you can take it no matter what it is, a song, a movie, you know, a poem, you take it and make it, you know, whatever you're going through. Okay. So you decided to take the time off. Your dad ends up passing. And then did you want to go back to work or like what it was it that... What was it? What, what what happened after that? I'm curious. I really am. I went through a really bad depression after mm. dad died. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah went, I went through a really bad depression after dad died. Um, mm-hmm. And yeah, I just didn't want to get up in the get up, get up in the morning. Mm-hmm. Didn't want to go uh, set and try to hustle. And... Definitely didn't want to go. Set. I didn't want to get out of bed, mm-hmm. let alone to set. Yeah. Uh, I feel you. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. Know, and then, it's hard. And then eventually either you survive it or you don't. And I did something like enough time had passed. I don't believe the bullshit where, you know, time heal, heals all wounds, but you know, life moves on, you know, mm. Mm. life moves on. People get older. Time definitely does help. But did, did you have any good influences like around you or was it mostly just people that were just partying with you or like, yeah, it was just people partying with me. Yeah. That yeah. sucks. It, it doesn't was, it? Cause it like does. what you need the most is intimacy, but what you end up getting is like just a lot of, a lot of people that are also hurting is really what it is. Is that like is attracting like M- misery so, loves company. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. hundred percent. I get that. So then when did that, when did you shake out of that and become the awesome person that you are today? That's a daily battle. <laughs> when did you decide that you were interested in art and, um, you know, teaching acting, which I know you've done and are you still acting? Are you definitively? I don't think not- it was, it was, yeah, I'm not, I'm not really acting so much anymore. I'm still teaching. I still teach, you know, our lessons to whoever wants it. If they want to work on something specific, whether it be, you know, motivation or environment or character work, whatever, you know, yeah. I'm always down to that because I love, I love teaching, you know, mm-hmm. I just don't like the politics of acting and all the, Ugh. all the nonsense, the nonsense that goes into it. But um, it, it wasn't ever like a conscious decision. I just, you know, ever since I was four years old, like my first memory I have is doing it. So it's, there's never like a set moment where it's like, aha, I like this. Mm-hmm. I, when that's all you know, that's all you know. I understand. Yeah. Yeah. 
So then when did you decide you were interested in other things other than acting? Uh, other things other than acting. Yeah. Like politics and your podcast. Oh, God. Definitely watching the world burn over the last four to six years has uh, definitely sparked an a little fire in my ass for sure. Oh, okay. And, uh, Interesting. So it's, de- it's definitely gotten more involved, but I don't, I, don't, I w- definitely wouldn't say I like politics. I hate it. I hate mm. it with a passion. It's horrible. It's ugly. You know? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Interesting. <laughs> but why are you so in, why are you so interested in doing a podcast about politics? Because I think it's important. It mm-hmm. is important. I, you know, it's easy. I think it's easy to bury your head in the sand and really not care about what's going on, especially when it's so, you know, out there, so crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and especially, you know, the last, God, last few years, uh, I feel like we've really forgotten how to talk to one another. You know, whether, it, you know, how, how many Thanksgivings were ruined because of politics this year? Mm. Count, I'm sure, you know, I'm mm-hmm. sure. Over the past, you know, and, and that's originally why Max and I started doing the podcast, you know, is to, you know, you, not unite people. That's way too strong of a word, but at least get them to stand each other. Be able to mm-hmm. sit down and have Thanksgiving without killing each other would be. A, yeah. So a you nice guys goal. are still doing the podcast, correct? No, no, we're not doing the podcast anymore. My friend Max okay. is actually running for the ninth district. So we, we stopped the podcast because we do say a lot of crazy shit on there. And he's, <laughs> you know, trying to not get as much crap as a normal politician would. So, OK, OK, but that's a that great. Up. But that's an amazing reason for you to stop doing that podcast. So, but I'm excited for what you have in terms of your creative spirit and what it is you want to do. So I think people would be really interested in knowing what are your goals going forward. If you could literally wave a a Disney wand um, and say to yourself, like, okay, money isn't really my, I don't have to grind and take odd jobs and like, you know, try to figure it out. What is it that you want to do, like going forward? Oh, I'd love to have my own acting studio and, mm. and, and kind of train up the next wave of, of actors. It drives me crazy that, you know, every superhero is English or Australian. <laughs> you know, it does. And, you know, mm-hmm. and it comes down to training. You know, it's and honestly, uh, my generation is, is part of the problem. You know, we we're the ones that told all these little kids that, you know, they're going to be discovered in the local mall. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I, I would love nothing more than to also teach these kids, you know, what I didn't know, you know, have have some sort of structure, you know, in your life, you know, have have be coming from a from a solid place, a good, you know, teach teach mental health in acting classes, too, which, you know, is underutilized. Huh. Yeah. You gotta, yeah, honestly, th- I'm telling you right now, like. Um, looking ahead is the program that I'm going to be getting more and more involved in because I have my two girls and it's hard to dedicate as much time as I would want to. Um, but there's definitely a push right now. And I think there's enough of us who've gone through the whole, like, I wouldn't say Disney like cycle because that's kind of shitty to Disney and it's not Disney's fault per se. It's the industry's, you know, way of being that (laughs) essentially cannibalizes your childhood if you know because that's what it's it's an adult working environment so you could feel like family but it is still an adult working environment so so there there is ways of having that mentorship like i'm hearing you say and of course who better to mentor people than safe adults that um care And, um, and, and have, have, you know, kids best interests in mind. So as anything, we, we grow, we learn, we take it a day at a time, but I will keep you in the know about that stuff because if it's something that you're called to speak on, like, it's nice to know that, you know, I see you and you see me in this and we could help people in the future. Um, Mm -hmm. I really, I really do thank you for, you know, sharing. And I hope that it wasn't too triggering to talk about stuff, but like, you know, um, I, I really, you know, care for you and I hope you're doing well. I feel also that's how we heal. Christy is, is to talk about it, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's for sure. They were even talking about recently. I spoke to a representative there who is a therapist. Um, and they were talking about having support groups 
um, so that the kids could pair off by age and, and, and have like support groups that their parents can go to or not. And um, my thing is this, that kids who are the actual at risk kids with stage parents who are violent, hostile, you know, abusive, they're not the ones and tell me, you know, I don't know, tell me what you think about this, but those are not the parents that are going to want their kid to be thinking differently because it's all about control for a lot of them. So I struggle with, well, how do we make it mandatory for there to be mental health check-ins for the at-risk kids that aren't being, you know, like actively trying to, you know, have that mentorship? You have to get SAG involved. Yeah, this is SAG. So this is SAG. This program is through SAG's Actors Fund. But the thing is, is like, how do you, how do you get them to mandatorily do it on set? Because that's the only way that those kids would be sort of like um, advocated for is if it's like, you know, or maybe it's mandatory that they go through these modules before, like module meaning like a training, a class or like, you know, meet with somebody the the volume would be mind boggling. But then again, I think if SAG really cared about these kids that make millions of dollars for them, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like these are not, these are people who are going to qualify for healthcare and pension credits. I'm like, I'm double vested. By the time I'm 65, we're good. I'm sure you're similar. It's like, if we yeah. can just make it to 65, I think we're going to be okay. Yeah, right. Do you, I don't know if you know about your pension benefits, but I'm sure you probably have like some retirement stuff in there. Yeah, 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 probably. If I make it to 65, like you were saying. You, you know. better, you better, you better be old with me. Um, <laughs> well, okay. So Steven, thank you so much. And where can people find you? You're on Cameo? I'm on Cameo. Everybody can find me on Cameo slash Stephen Anthony Lawrence. Here for your birthday requests, wedding requests, bacon eating advice. <laughs> awesome thank you very much for this candid conversation i feel like i might have talked a lot more than i should have oh, no you're fine christy and i, I just everybody loves to hear you speak you know <laughs> i feel i feel like child yeah, actors you know yeah. we we go from we go from love me love me love me to i'm not an animal <laughs> i feel like I mean, it happens sometimes a hundred a hundred percent It is a crazy little pixie world to live in, but we manage. And like you said, talking about it really does help. Okay. So thank you so much. Much love to you and Brendan. Love you guys. Talk soon. Bye. Peace. (laughs) 